So now we move on to the different assumptions that we usually assume first before we start to analyze frames and machines. So, first on the list, I actually lahat ng assumptions dito sa natin sa frame sa machine. Medyo katulad lang din nung sa, ano, sa beams. Medyo magigets nyo na to agad kasi katulad lang naman to nung sa beam. So, first on the list, I, we assume na yung members of frame of a frame or a machine ay rigidly joined together in itself. Ibig sabihin, uh, yung bawat part na isang member ay rigidly joined together. Ibig sabihin, pag pinaghiwalay mo sila, ang lalabas ay katulad sa isang fixed connection which has uh, two, two forces na lalabas sa isang moment equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So, kunyari, ito yung frame natin composed of four members and makikita nyo, yung connection nila walang naka-indicate and sabi ko nga before, pag walang naka-indicate, we usually assume na uh, rigid connection siya. So, so, yung connection nila sa bawat isa rigid as well as yung connection nila sa support. So, ibig sabihin, puro fixed connection yan. Ibig sabihin, pag dinisconnect natin yung mga yan from being connected, ang lalabas ay katulad sa isang fixed connection which has two forces and one moment. And, again, katulad ng sinasabi sa assumption number one, yung MIMS mo member itself, rigidly joined together siya. Ibig sabihin, pag, pag kinat natin yan, disconnect natin yung one part ng member from the other part, uh, parang fixed connection din siya. May lalabas din na dalawang forces and isang moment. Although, again, sabi, sabi nga natin kanina, hindi naman lagi requirement na rigid dapat yung connection ng bawat member ng frame. So, pwedeng flexible connection or pin or hinge connection just like this one. Ayan, hinge siya. So, ibig sabihin lang yan, pag dinisconnect natin tong member, tsaka tong member na to, ang lalabas lang ay dalawang forces lang. Wala nang moment kasi pin na siya. So, that is what we call hinge or internal hinge. Usually, we call that internal hinge to differentiate it from hinge connection na katulad ng sa hinge support. Kasi magkaiba yung hinge support tsaka yung hinge na to. That's why we usually call this internal hinge. Later on, papaliwanag ko na yung difference ng dalawang hinge na yan. Second assumption natin ay kung may dadalhin man na load yung frame natin or bawat member ng frame natin, we assume na those loads are uh, contained on a plane that also contains the longitudinal axis of each member or any member uh, itself, individual member. So, sabihin lang nun, kung may dadalhin na applied load yung frame natin, just like this one and this one, as well as yung uh, force na in-exert ng support dun sa structure, kung may dadalhin naman ng mga load or forces yung frame natin, we assume na yung mga yan, mga forces na yan na dinadala ng frame natin, ay uh, naglalay sa isang plane that also contains the longitudinal axis of each member. So, kunyari, ito na lang tong member na to. Kunyari, this is a plane containing the longitudinal axis of the member. So, kunyari na lang itong member na to ay ito. So, nasa yung longitudinal axis niya, itong member na yan? So, again, just like sa beam, yung longitudinal axis ay ito. Yung axis or yung line that connects the centroids of each cross-sectional area of this member of the frame. And nasan to? Yung kulay dilaw na plane na to. So, yung plane na yan, we assume na dumadaan yan sa longitudinal axis. So, like that. Just like this one. Ayan. So, according lang sa assumption number 2, we assume na yung load na dinadala ng bawat member ay naglalay sa plane na to. So, ibig sabihin lang yan, kumbaga sa whiteboard, dyan siya nakadrawing yung force na yan. Dyan nakadrawing sa whiteboard na yan or sa plane na yan. And just like sa, ano, sa beam, usually use the vertical plane, we usually assume na yung mga loads na dinadala ng bawat member ng isang frame, usually 
ay naglalay sa vertical plane na to. Ibig sabihin, nakatayo siya. Parang whiteboard nga per se, na naka, nakatayo lang, naka, naka vertical yung orientation niya. Pero again, hindi naman kailangan lagi na vertical. Pwede rin naman pahiga. Basta as long as yung plane na yon ay dumadaan dito sa longitudinal axis ng member ng isang frame. So that is our second assumption. Third assumption natin, uh, we assume na yung weight ng bawat member ng frame ay uniformly distributed all throughout its length. So ibig sabihin, parang sabihin lang din. So, parang ganito, ibig sabihin yung weight nito is uniformly distributed all throughout its length. Pero syempre hindi talaga ganito kasi ito naka-slant eh. So, alam naman natin ang weight, that is a force na always vertically downward. Kasi nga, diba due to gravity siya. So, imagine nyo na lang na kunyari itong member na to, if we represent its weight using distributed load, ang itsura niya is parang ganito na nakapoint vertically downward yung mga uniform na load. And pare-pare sila ng magnitude all throughout its length of the member. That is what we say, uh, we state here on assumption number 3. Pero again, this is for prismatic members lang. Ibig sabihin na prismatic, parang ganito. Uh, all throughout its length, yung cross-sectional area niya ay pare-pareho lang. So, kung tapering siya, ibig sabihin hindi pare-pare yung dimension or size ng bawat cross-sectional area niya all throughout its length. Siyempre, we cannot assume na uniform na yung distribution na ang load or ng weight niya all throughout its length. Hindi na yun uniform. Nagbabari na yan. So, that's a different story. Pero, most of the time naman, prismatic yung ano natin, member. And most of the time, nininaglip naman natin yung weight no member. Fourth assumption, we assume na yung buong frame natin ay in equilibrium. Meaning, pag nag-summation ka ng forces and moments, dapat equal sa zero. Or in other words, kapag nag-summation ka ng forces along horizontal, vertical, tsaka moment, dapat they will be all equal to zero dito sa buong structure natin, sa buong frame natin. Next assumption, ay we assume na yung mga internal forces acting on a member ng frame natin or machine, they all act on the centroid of the cross-sectional area. So, ibig sabihin, kung ito yung member natin, and ito yung cross-sectional area niya, and ito yung centroid niya, we assume na yung internal forces acting on this member ay dyan nag act sa centroid na yan, no cross-sectional area. That's our fifth assumption. Six assumption, the last assumption is that if ever we cut the member of a frame using a cutting section, we usually assume na yung cutting section, section na to ay naka-perpendicular with respect sa longitudinal axis ng no member. So, kunyari, nag-cut tayo ng, naglagay tayo ng cutting section dyan sa member na yan. We usually assume na yung cutting section niya yan ay naka-right angle or perpendicular with respect dito sa longitudinal axis no member.